Hello, it's Jennifer. It's Tuesday, May 16th. Today I'm outside in the yard because it's a sad day, I think. But I'm going to have to go ahead and pull this plant. Uh, it looks like it's just got too much blight for me to continue with it. Plus, it's like some third generation hybrid uh, of a Juliet. And I have no idea what kind of tomatoes these are. And I think it's best that I just pull the plant, treat the soil, and start over again with something else. So today I'll go ahead and pull this plant and then go through and prune off some of the disease uh, leaves and branches off my other plants and once again <laughs> open up this tomato forest to let some air in <laughs> so I can at least try to control the blight. I think uh, yeah, blight comes and you just have to do something about it. And I know my goal is to keep the plants alive long, long enough to get right fruits. Most of my tomatoes have some sort of blight um, in some stages. This is probably <laughs> a bad thing for me to do to plant so many tomatoes so close together like this, but I was trying the whole single stem uh, square foot method, which I don't believe uh, should be done. It's just that tomatoes get too big. Um, these over here, I've been chasing the blight up the branches of the uh, plant. And, well, basically I'm just waiting for the tomatoes to mature to get them off and then to start again. Um, this tomato here, though, has put out a couple of new plants, so maybe I don't have to replant anything so much as... Uh, cut the old plant out and let the new plant grow. And here and here. And again, another plant that I've been chasing up the line. And I'm also having problems with my determinate tomatoes and these. I'm just trying to let the tomatoes ripen before I pull the plants. And again, I will go ahead and treat the soil with fun on the side and try again. Uh, that's what I did last year. I had similar problems. I treated the soil with fungicide uh, and then planted again and tried my best to um, maintain the plants, not to get the leaves wet and all that, but it's really tough uh, here in the winter and spring because it is moist and it is cold at night and cool in the mornings and then it warms up in the afternoon. So uh, maybe the second round of tomatoes will go much better uh, because we'll have much more stable warm weather. And again the same problem over here where I've been chasing the blight up behind. These though are starting to blush so uh, <laughs> Hopefully I'll be able to collect all these tomatoes soon and have some sauce. I'm really looking forward to that sauce. I'm singly focused on sauce. But there's some nice big tomatoes in here. And this one here is starting to turn red. There's another one back there. It's also starting to turn red. My other tomato plants are now flowering and putting on fruits. So. Uh, this is one of my Cherokee plants. It's got fruit on it. This is San Marzano. And it has a bunch of fruit on it. Um, this one here is black cherry. And um, these are speckled Roman. And they are just starting to get flowers on them. These ones have been lagging the other ones, the Speckle Roman. Um, I guess they just grow slower. And then you get to a plant like this and you say to yourself, Good Lord, what's going on here? Oh, this is a fine mess. Anyhow, oh, it's got some stripy tomatoes on it though. So that's good, but oh, this is going to be interesting trying to untangle what's going on here. 
So basically this plant has shot out a bunch of side plants um, from it looks like from the base of the plant. And then there's a bunch of suckers. And I've got some decision making to make. And first of all, do I want to try to single stem this? Do I want to try to dual stem this? Which parts to keep and which parts to get rid of? Ah. I decided to leave it as two stems uh, since this one here is already inside of this weave and is growing up pretty uh, much along the uh, stake. So I'll go ahead and tie that piece of the plant to the stake and let it continue from here. I cleaned up my uh, determinant tomato bed some. Uh, all of the plants in here are diseased. Uh, not much I can do about it, uh, but there are tomatoes, so I'm going to let them ripen enough, and then I'll start a new batch of tomatoes. Um, this one here is the silvery fir, and I'm wondering whether I should just pull those tomatoes off, or whether I should just keep letting it go until it just kicks over dead. These are Sprite tomatoes, which are little grape tomatoes. Uh, I think, I'm not sure what that is. I know this one is the bison with the big tomato on it. And in the back are, um, I forgot what those are, but there are a Roma variety of tomato. I think they're just like called Roman or something like that. And then up here are the taxi tomatoes. And I'm waiting for those to turn yellow. Uh, that indicates that they're ripe. And here's one of my black creme. I've been having a tough time with these guys. Um, <laughs> they like to create branches and shoot off. So this one tried to make another branch here and then over here was a branch that was trying to form over here was a branch that was trying to form over here and then on up another branch another branch <laughs> and on up so it's like every week looking for new uh growing tips again like this one here and popping them off because uh this plant i had one in a grow bag last year and i swear it grew a dozen vines and I was wrangling them and tying them up and it just got really, really unsightly very, very quickly. And here's the second in ground black creme and it's got now two branches coming up. Tried to have a third come on up here. And right now I left the two branches on so it's got two growing tips. Um, but last week I had to cut off uh, several heads of this uh, because it had many growing tips going and it was just crazy. Oh. <sighs> suckers, suckers. So, yeah. So anyhow, um, yeah, just be careful with black creme. They, they, they go nuts. Another one. <laughs> I swear I come out here every day <laughs> and pull off new growing tips. 